The other day at a thrift store, I bought an old record album called Sounds That Wasps Make. When I got home and played it, I thought, this doesn't sound anything like wasp sounds. Then I realized I was playing the B-side. Welcome to my YouTube channel today. This comic book editions video is part seven, the final plan part of my spectacular spider haul. I'm gonna show you Peter Parker's spectacular Spider-Man comic books that were released between 1985 and 1987 that I've recently added into my collection. Let's get going. We're starting out with a pretty fantastic cover, I think. This is issue number 105 from 1985. I was very excited to see Wasp on the cover. She's always been a favorite character of mine from the Avengers. And, I, you know, I have some Marvel team-up comic books as well with Wasp and Spider-Man. And I thought, okay, this is going to be really good. This is a Peter David story. He was the writer. And I read this, and I just couldn't get into it. It kind of has like a mob theme to the story. It's the first of a two-parter. And I thought, well, it will get better in the next issue, right? Yeah, it's going to get better in the next issue. So I picked up the next issue. And first of all, um, Mark Beecham did this cover for 106. And I, I absolutely love this cover as much as I love 105. For me, the covers were the best part of this two-part story because I just didn't like the story. I didn't like the way that Peter David depicted Wasp. I just didn't feel, it didn't feel like the Wasp, I mean, it had aspects of the Wasp character, but he really made her even more vain and superficial than I've seen her portrayed before. She has a little bit of that in her characteristics, but I don't know. So, you know, I bought this Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man lot. I think it was like 76 books that I got all at once. And out of all of those 76 books, 105 and 106 were the first issues that I read. And I wish I hadn't done that because I didn't like these. And throughout all of the time that I went back and was reading the issues, you know, in the 20s, 30s, 40s, you know, uh, 60s, 70s, eight, whatever. I just kept thinking to myself, this series is going to take a nosedive and it's not going to be good anymore by the time I get up to 105. And that's not necessarily the case. Even though I look back at uh, pretty much each one of my Spectacular spider Hall videos, you'll see an issue or two where I'm like, yeah, this just wasn't that good. But overall, this series has been fantastic. Even the issue that I shared, you know, 104, which I ended my last video, the Spectacular spider Hall Part 6 with, that was a great story too. So, but not knowing that, I always knew that the Peter Parker Spectacular Spider Hulk comic books, you know, the ones that I had were always really good. And then I thought, well, it takes a turn and it's not going to be good by the time I get here. Not the case though. These are, this is just a one-off story that, that doesn't work for me. Covers work for me though, that's for sure. So 107 I don't have, which is too bad. I need to get 107 at some point uh, because we pick up with 108. And there's a big storyline that starts in 107. And spoiler, it's the death of the character uh, Gene DeWolf. And that's what's being dealt with. So I come in in the middle of, you know, this is part two of the story arc that started. And, and she died in the previous issue. Um, and I have lots of questions going on. So this is still Peter David writing. Um, and he wrote the majority of the books that I'm showing in this video today. But I like this. This was good. I, I don't know what happened because last time Spider-Man was still in the traditional red and blue costume. Now he's back to the black costume. So I'm not exactly sure what changed there that brought him back last time that at least Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man comic book wise that I knew they knew the, the costume was trying to bond with him as a symbiote. So I'm not sure why this costume's back with him. Uh, Rich Buckler did this cover. Uh, we have a Daredevil appearance as well. Oh, you know who also makes a cameo in this? Actor Charles Bronson. And um, it's a reference to the character that he played in a movie called The Death Wish, which kind of is in a similar vein to the storyline that they're doing. 109 keeps this uh, story up. He who is without sin. So um, really good storyline, though. This is one of those, like, Many of the other books where I read an issue, I get done with it, I'm like, I can't wait to read the next issue and see how this, this moves on. That's the overall theme that I kind of came up with after buying and reading so many spectacular Spider-Man comic books from the Bronze Age into the Copper in a row. 
most of the stories are good. If you're looking for a good series to pick up, or I know there's an omnibus out there too, uh, I really do recommend that. Another good issue here, um, Daredevil still in the storyline. I remember Daredevil being in the Clarion storyline too, which I really enjoyed back in the you know mid to late 20s issue number wise. 110 has another awesome cover. And here we have Spider-Man and Daredevil you know, fighting each other, which actually does happen in the story. Spider-Man and Daredevil have two completely different takes on how they should handle the problem and the villain that's at hand. And they're both so frustrated with what has occurred that they end up fighting each other. And that was really cool. And this was a good choice to use, you know, this portion of the story as the cover. Um, maybe out of all of the books that I'm showing, this is the one that I really like the best. I think if I'm remembering correctly, too, this wraps up that Jean um, DeWolf storyline, her death. I think that this issue wraps it up. So this was good stuff. This next issue, 114, is kind of a one-off, meaning that it's just a one-issue story. And um, Len, um, what is Len's last name? Len, Len Kaminsky. Sorry, it took me a minute there. He wrote this story. Um, and I'm looking at this going, why is Spider-Man back in his traditional costume again? He was back in the black costume. Now he's in this traditional. What's going on here? This, spoiler, this isn't Spider-Man. This is... A villain, I won't almost say a villain, he, he's kind of like a pickpocket. Or, you know, he broke he's a he's a burglar. He broke into Peter Parker's apartment and found the spare Spider-Man, his old original costume. So Spider-Man has this problem too of how am I gonna convince this guy that Peter Parker and Spider-Man aren't the same? And um, the guy dresses up as Spider-Man and is committing some crimes. And, you know, the Daily Beagle anyway has got it out for Spider-Man. Now there is someone dressed as Spider-Man in an authentic costume committing these crimes, too. So this story just lasts one issue. It's no previous issue doesn't continue into the next issue. This was really good. I really like this. Another book, as we jump forward again, too, we're at 121. And this is just another one-off story as well. I think if I'm remembering correctly, Peter David's back writing again on this. This was very cinematic, um, at least television cinematic wise, I should say, a uh, storytelling wise. It felt like a, a TV show episode, which you've heard me say that about some other comic books from the Spectacular Spider-Man run. But you have the same event told in three different perspectives. You have it from Mary Jane's perspective. You have it from J. Jonah Jameson's perspective. And you had a, have it from Peter Parker's perspective, too. And um, just a, a robbery that occurs at a bank when um, Peter and Mary Jane and Jay Jonah are all going out for lunch. What an interesting pairing to go out to lunch, right? So this was a fun story. Another good read. So I definitely was wrong, you know, when I was so jaded thinking those 105 and 106 issues, things wouldn't get better after that. Completely wrong. Then the final issue from... All of my spectacular spider hauls that I have to share with you is this one, 123. It's another Peter David. This one was just okay. This one didn't hold my attention as much. We have Black Cat returning. Um, she's definitely interested in getting back with, with uh, Spider-Man and even accepting him as his Peter Parker identity. Uh, she's really ready to get with him. She's got a new shorter haircut, a new costume. Wasn't crazy about either one of those. Parts of the story were good. It wasn't as good as the other things that I had read, but it wasn't horrible either. So I was just kind of very middle in the road on this. So those are months and months worth of spectacular Spider-Man comic books uh, that I've been sharing with you. As of right now, now I bought all like all 76 of these issues that you saw split up over all of these different months from December to now June. Um, I bought them all together in one lot. Since then, I had bought some other Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man comic books and filled in some gaps, and I showed you those in previous comic book editions videos. Right now, I have no other Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man comic books either in transit to me or coming or filling in any gaps or anything. But right now, my Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man comic book collection looks like this. So you see I've got a pretty steady... Um, groove of issues going and some nice consecutive runs. And then there's some I'm missing too that hopefully before the year's over with, you know, I'll be able to fill in. You're going to see some other Spider-Man related comic book back issues on my channel. Um, recently, earlier this month, you saw one. Uh, there's more coming. 
you know, Spidey Super Stories, Amazing Spider-Man. I have back issues from those titles and Marvel Tales as well to uh, all share with you in upcoming comic book editions videos. But out of all the covers that I shared today, which one was your favorite? Make sure to leave me a comment below so I know that. Sharing this video or sharing my channel is another great way to show support. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to do that. Spider-Man would approve of that if you did that, and it would mean a lot to me as well. I'm very curious and, and uh, what you think of the Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man run overall. I knew it was good. I didn't realize this series is really as good as it is. I found a lot of enjoyment. It was a very smart decision buying that huge lot of books. And now I want to get the rest and fill in. Am I going to do the entire run of the series? Probably not. But I want to fill in the issues I have. You know, I might go up to, you know, the one, somewhere in the 120s is probably where I'll stop. Because that's where it naturally stopped when I was an original childhood collector. So that's probably my goal right now. Thanks for making it to the end of this Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man. It's a part seven of the Spider Hall videos, our video for the month of June. I appreciate your support so much, and I'll see you with just another regular comic book editions video next week. Take care. Sounds that wasps make wasps. Pss, pss, pss. Why do I keep saying that? Wasps. Wasps. Pss, 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 pss. The wasp. So you can say the wasp. It's the wasps. Wasps.